Hello, I'm MVX Toy Cat, and it can be very popular to criticize religion on the internet, but the truth is, although there are lots of negative things, it can be a source of values and guidance with which to live your life by. A lot of people do appreciate that, and as a result, I'm sure a lot of people must spend lots of time deciding which religion to follow. I mean, surely they don't just pick the ones their parents tell them is true and then follow that for the rest of their life. No, what people do is they do in-depth research as to which religion they should pick up, and that's where today's video comes in, because these sorts of tricky decisions are best made with the help of a Minecraft video. Right, so here is a Minecraft village, and we're going to explain exactly how you can pick a religion by using it. Hindus believe in reincarnation. This means if you're a good person, when you die, you'll respawn as a cow. If you're a bad person, you'll respawn as a sapling. Although, I'm not sure how we're meant to take the fact that there's a lot more saplings and trees in the world than there are cows. Pascal's wager suggests that the best bet to make in your life is to believe in religion even if you don't really think it's real. Because if it turns out you're wrong about it not being real, there is a religion and you bet that there wasn't, then you've got eternal suffering on your plate. If it turns out there is religion and you follow all of it so that you get into this theoretical heaven, then guess what? You've got eternal paradise. The bet, uh, you know, would basically suggest that there is no reason not to believe in religion if there's even a fraction chance of it existing and that's what the Hellenistic, uh, you know, religions took to its extreme because they they thought, you know what, why don't we do this for all the different gods? So under Hellenistic beliefs, you believe in all the different gods and you know what, you have a great chance of eventually one of them being right. I mean, if Zeus isn't real, then maybe Hades is. If neither of them are real, you know, maybe Hera or Poseidon are correct. You never know and that's why you believe in all the different gods and you've got the optimal chance of eternal paradise when you die. How wonderful. Bonus fun fact is that the Greek gods actually align pretty closely with the Roman gods. They both had pantheons of gods. And the reason for that was so they could integrate a territory into their, you know, like kind of country and just kind of take their god and be like, yeah, we totally believe in your guy as well. He's just a minor god. He's no Zeus. He's no Jupiter. But you know what he is? He's a minor guy. And that's why they had so many religions. <laughs> Alternatively, you can double down on the opposite side of that wager and you can become a Satanist. I mean, sure, it sounds pretty bad. Everything's on fire all the time and there are hellish monsters that want your blood and they will torture you for eternity. But, I mean, the life you live before you get there is pretty fun and there's a chance it's all made up anyway. Because, I mean, if it's real, this Satan guy is the one you want to be following. The one with the infinite power, even more powerful than the guy with actual infinite power. So I'm just saying, follow Satanism. Uh, get a hellish forever off life, however, also end up with all the cool people. Because for real, if there is a hell, the vast majority, 99.99% of all humans who have lived, probably are there. So you know, don't you want to come meet your friends? All you have to have is a little bit of eternal torture. But people say they enjoy school, which is basically the same trade-off, right? <laughs> This village is ruled by a giant flying spaghetti monster in the sky. And although you might say that's unlikely, the flying spaghetti monster ensures all of the villagers can live, love, and have their best lives. And of course you might say, I mean, I don't have any proof of the flying spaghetti monster, but if you have to believe in something that you can't see, hear, or touch anyway, why not have something which actually resonates with the people believing in it, and you know what resonates with pretty much everyone? Bowls of pasta. So the flying spaghetti monster, the hero the village needs. In the Catholic village, churches are a lot bigger, a lot grander, and a lot more beautiful. However, behind closed doors... Islam is actually a pretty standard Abrahamic religion, with the exception being that pigs are unclean and all must be killed, of course. But besides that, you know, actually it's a pretty standard religion and you shouldn't believe everything you hear in the media about it. So, get this, there was a villager who was digging around in his garden one day when he found these golden plates that were buried there by the angel Moroni. These golden plates had the entire holy scripture that no religion till that point had gotten right on them, and as a result of that, people are all very nice to each other in this particular state in the United States. And long story short, Jesus was an American, you've got to be very nice to your neighbors, and also, uh, you can't drink hot drinks because they are the devil's uh, doing. That is for real, by the way. Don't ask me. Don't ask me why. 
Jehovah's Witnesses are another fairly new sect of Christianity, with the fun little exclusion in their religion being the fact that only 144,000 people can get into heaven. Any more than that, and uh, no spaces for you, so that means people have to compete with each other to actually get one of those top spots. And you know how people do that? That's right, you knock on the doors of other religions, very politely or not so politely, and you convert them over to your religion. If you can do so, you're a slightly better Jehovah's than the guy next to you, and you're more likely to get one of those spots in heaven. So, yeah, fun fact, how'd you get into heaven? Just like this. Also, if for whatever reason you decide to leave and pick up another religion, you know what's gonna happen to you. You're gonna be excommunicated, and there's gonna be some subtle threats made on your behalf. But that's fine, I mean, gotta get into heaven. They're just looking out for you getting you one of those 144,000 spots. Good guy, Jehovah's. So Scientology is a fun cross between Jehovah's Witnesses, you know it's a fairly recent religion, with a fun mix of flying spaghetti monster in there. But instead of being patently absurd, there's a layer of abstraction in there, because the founder of the religion was literally a science fiction writer, and one of those science fiction books is the basis for the religion. You might think that Lord Xenu coming to Earth and taking all the, you know, the souls from the bodies of the people- You might think that Lord Xenu coming down to Earth and making everybody sad as a part of his religion is a weird and wacky science fiction book, and you'd be right, but it's also uh, the thing behind Scientology. Funnily enough, actually, Scientology is only classified as a religion in the United States because of a huge blackmail campaign, both against people who criticize them, but also against the IRS. They went after a bunch of individual IRS employees, and yeah, if you criticize Scientology, you go on a list, and that's why I'm gonna stop doing that right now. Scientology is really good. Yeah, all religions should be based on science fiction books, am I right? Look how happy and not strained this was for me to say. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's also this. More seriously, it's just like Christianity with fewer pigs, less Jesus, and a lot more money in general. And also fun questions about statehood that we're not qualified to address today because this is about religion. Some villagers realize the structure and the meaning that can come with a religion can come with pretty much anything if you apply the same moral guidance and value system to your life. There doesn't have to be a higher deity that makes everything possible or impossible. Instead, you can believe by a set of brute values that you will decide on. So for instance, that can be as simple as deciding to only eat, you know, plant-based things. You can eat all of this on the ground and that can be your religion if you want it to be. Anything you care about deeply and anything that shapes your value system in the world can become your religion. And if you really want to, that's a thing you can do. However, most of the villagers that try this lifestyle realize that, you know, you can take most things too far, and that's true. You can take pretty much any single religion, thought, belief way too far to the level where it detriments the rest of your life, and you have to return to society. Most people make that return to society. It's just the question as to how long it takes you to realize that all of these things can apply the same negatives and upsides. It just depends on how much the thing itself pushes those. All villagers are the same gender, so this entire village is a sin, for reasons like this one right here. So some people like the concept of belief, of believing in something despite having no evidence of it, and they use the concept, instead of believing positively, they believe against things. So you can believe exactly that there is no god, you can believe there's no Minecraft village, you can believe there's no video talking about, So if you enjoyed it, please do let me know in the comments down below, because these are videos I enjoy that just don't make any sense on YouTube as far as, like, earnings to time put in, but it's a video I really like, and I hope if you like it, you'll let me know with some form of positive comment that reinforces my worldview. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, someone's gonna be offended that I insulted their religion, and all the other ones are wrong, but their one is perfect, but the truth is, you know what? Someone in the Flying Spaghetti Monster cult, they're gonna be offended I insulted their religion too. And you know what, the, f the fun thing is, I'm an equal opportunity offender, which makes it okay, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, goodbye.